Okay, hi there friends. This is Sean Wilsey putting together a little uh, news item video for you today. I've been monitoring with, with a lot of interest and um, some scrutiny some of the developments that have been going on in Iceland over the last month or so. Uh, it's today's November 3rd, 2023, um, and place that's near and dear to my heart. And so uh, I want to update you a little bit on what's going on there. Uh, it appears there's a lot of signs indicating that an eruption might be happening quite soon. In fact, maybe by you watch, by the time you watch this, it might have already occurred. And the location of this eruption is a little bit different than what we've seen the last two or three years in Iceland. And it actually poses some much more significant risks in the area. So I want to take you through some of the science and uh, the data that we've been looking at that lets us know that an eruption is not, I wouldn't say imminent or likely, but highly possible is maybe the, the words I would, I would carefully choose there. Um, and then also we can then look at um, what possible effects this might have. And this of course would be somewhat um, making some, some speculation and just assumptions about the type of eruption in the area and that. So, so let's go ahead and start with the, the graphic here. Um, what we can say based on today is that there is definitely magma that has injected into the crust uh, in the southwestern part of Iceland um, on the Reykjanes Peninsula in an area very close to the Blue Lagoon. And if you know a little bit about Iceland and its uh, tourism, uh, some of its top sites, I believe the Blue Lagoon is the number one tourist destination in Iceland. It's right near the airport. It's close to Reykjavik. Um, and I'll show you some photos of that here in a bit. This is just an image here of uh, just from today uh, earthquakes I believe in the last 48 hours and I believe the green stars are earthquakes that are magnitude 3 or above and so just in the last day or two they've had I think a 4.2 and some other uh, notable earthquakes that were actually felt and detected by residents in the area let's skip over to um, to Google Earth and look at the eruption and just maybe look at a bigger broader view of Iceland if you're not familiar with the area um, and its sort of role. So Iceland of course sits in the North Atlantic. Uh, it's an interesting place because it's not only sitting on top of the divergent plate boundary, so this is a plate boundary where the plates are spreading apart, but so much magma uh, and lava, excuse me, lava has erupted in Iceland that it's also considered a hot spot. So like Hawaii, it actually has erupted so much material that it's built up this sizable island right over or mostly over this mid uh, mid ocean ridge, um, this divergent plate boundary. And you can actually see that plate boundary coming on shore here onto this peninsula, the Southwest Peninsula, which is known as uh, the Reykjanes Peninsula. So we're gonna focus on this area here. Lots of uh, cool things happening in other parts of Iceland, glaciers, uh, ice caps, other volcanoes to be aware of as well. Um, but this is the area that we're really focusing on. This is the airport area here around Keflavik, over here, uh, this is Reykjavik, the capital city and the largest urban center. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do here is show you where the last few eruptions have been. So this area has been quiet uh, volcanically for a long time. Um, it had a huge series of eruptions between 950 to 1240 AD. This area was riddled with numerous lava flows, uh, just countless eruptions covered this landscape. But then it's largely been quiet for the last uh, I guess what 800 or so years and it basically sprung to life in 2021 uh, with an eruption in this area here um, and so you, you actually can see this still on Google Earth you can see some of the steam coming out of the vent um, and then some of the black here some of these lava flows that poured out of this thing um, it was a great tourist attraction it did not threaten as it played out any sort of infrastructure no homes no lives lost it didn't make it down to the coastal highway and it occurred in a region that was uh great i mean in terms of like it was pretty accessible uh for most folks it was fairly close to the airport i mean i can't imagine another scenario where you could uh, land at an international airport rent a car uh, and within less than an hour be boots on the ground uh, hiking into an active lava flow. Let's also remember that um, this part of Iceland in particular produces fairly effusive eruptions. So it's erupting lava, it's shooting lava into the sky, but it's not exploding. It's not fragmenting the lava, it's not creating ash, it's not 
you know Mount St. Helens type of eruption styles these are actually um, fairly passive they mainly produce lava flows now those lavas can be hazardous if they become large in volume and threaten infrastructure um, but they're not explosive uh, we have had explosive volcanoes in Iceland in the recent past but a lot of those were out over here where they erupted under ice and so that interaction between lava and ice uh, does produce much more explosive conditions but this area is known for producing mainly um, uh, lava flows uh, coming out of these cracks you can see a lot of these fractures that trend northeast southwest uh, parallel or mostly parallel to that direction that that tectonic plate makes as it comes on shore onto Iceland so there's our 2021 eruption uh, and that went from I think like March to September of that year and then things quieted down in Iceland for a bit uh, and then in 2022 which was the year I was lucky enough to be able to get out there it started erupting in August and I think it lasted into September it was a pretty short-lived eruption maybe six weeks or so uh, at the most but a, a similar area uh, and similar style eruption so didn't didn't really leave these valleys up here in these highlands stayed pretty close and then this past year in 2023 uh, the eruption location moved a little bit further northeast and also now it doesn't show on Google Earth because we uh, we don't have images that new uh, but affected more or less this area in here so this was the area of lava inundation from 2023 and that was this summer like July to August of this year the area that we're looking at though now uh, you might expect that well like why didn't it continue that trend and probably at the end of this cycle in 2023 um, if you had to guess what it was going to do next it made sense that it might step further to the northeast uh, near this uh, old mountain here or this old volcano called Kalir uh, but it didn't what we're seeing now is that the most likely zone of a future eruption future being anywhere from in the next 10 minutes to the next um, few months or so is in this area here um, and so this is the blue lagoon and there's a large power plant right here so if we kind of zoom in you can see the blue lagoon is kind of a, a spa place it's a big uh, hot spring area so there's a hotel here and you can get a mud bath a, a facial and a massage and this is this is a huge tourist attraction you can see all the parking over here um, and then adjacent to it is uh, a large power plant that supplies electricity and I believe also maybe hot water to some of the residents in this part of Iceland um, and so this is a big concern uh, in addition to this fishing village called uh, Grindavik let me turn the put the labels on so you can see the town names there um, they've got a harbor right here and so we'll come back to this later on but this hopefully provides some context of the area that we're looking at here in Iceland uh, let's look at some more of the data here so we talked a little bit about the earthquake data uh, but in addition to that we've also had ground deformation and so th there's that highway uh, there's the little fishing village the blue lagoon and the power plant are about right here so you can see with the bullseye colors here this is the amount of uplift um, for I'm not sure which period here maybe this goes up to October 31st uh, so this would be uh, millimeters of uplift and this is pretty striking to have that much uplift in this area over a fairly short period of time so the the bullseye is pointing to the area where the ground has actually risen uh, presumably again due to the magma um, intruding into the crust and then the land above it is actually inflating a little bit this uses a technique called INSAR uh, which stands for interferometric synthetic aperture radar it's basically uh, flies over an area with bounces radar off an area then flies over it at some time uh, later and does the same thing and then measures uh, the difference and we've got good enough resolution with this cool technology that allows us to see how much the the land surface is changing so this this is why this is the area of concern uh, another way we've figured out or been able to detect the ground movement is with GPS and so these fun three graphs here show how much the land is uh, moving any fixed location is either shifting to the north uh, so if it goes up it would be moving to the north if it goes down it would be moving to the south uh, the middle one here shows how much it's moving 
uh, relative to east. So if it's moving more east, it would go up. If it was moving more to the west, it would go down. And then this last one, so these are th this is three-dimensional control. This last one shows how much the ground is moving vertically. Uh, and so you can see if it, if it trends upwards, that's actually uplift of the ground. Uh, these daily, these are just daily fluctuations. The, the ground there is uh, basalt, it's lava rock, it's dark. And so this just the sun coming out uh, could cause the ground to just slightly move a little bit. So ignore the kind of up and down little daily um, oscillations here. And what's most notably of concern here is notice there's like, a pretty stable trend here but just in the last half or so of October uh, there's a significant movement in the ground at this station this specific GPS station to the south uh, and then similarly looking at the middle plot here there's a bit of a kick to the east um, and then this is maybe the one that's most alarming and it also matches the INSAR graph we just looked at before here's uh, the uplift one here and notice it start trending up at the end here at the end of October so this indicates ground uplift in in the area so um, so that's what the data is showing right now and, and again I've done the best I can here this is not uh, I'm, I can navigate much easier the USGS uh, data as opposed to some of the Iceland data but and I'm sure there's more out there that I didn't find but this shows uh, some of it um, and then I wanted to maybe point out so they the their main office that compiles a lot of their geologic um, data is the Icelandic Met Office um, and so you can see all the things they they, they monitor there uh, and I just wanted to look at some of today's updates so this is for November 3rd uh, so there was a magnitude 4.3 earthquake um, and that was today um, and there was another one that was magnitude 3.5 uh, these earthquakes are thought to be due to continuing stress in the crust from magma accumulation under Thorbjorn Mountain so that's the big hill that sits right next to the Blue Lagoon. Um, no volcanic tremor has been detected, so that's good. That would indicate that the magma is moving much closer to the surface and it's it's probably on its way to erupting. Um, yeah, and then there's some other updates here. They kind of outline the area of concern. Uh, they talk about the earthquake frequency. So this is as of midnight last night, November 2nd, there was around uh, 1,000 earthquakes recorded in the area. Uh, with two above 3.0 and two above 4.0 and so what we're seeing then is the number of earthquakes the sheer frequency and the size of some of these earthquakes is what's alarming so it's the it's the seismic data combined with the the deformation data that all are, are the primary indicators that we've got definitely magma moving in the subsurface and the $64,000 question of course is well is that magma going to erupt it could move up into some zone uh, and it could stay there for some period of time it could even start cooling and crystallizing long term um, or if that magma has enough buoyancy to it or more magma moves into it then it's going to want to find an easy path to make its way to the surface um, and so these are some of the concerns that we have about the Iceland area so again um, kind of looking at the topography here um, it'd be tough to know exactly where in this region an eruption a future eruption might occur and Iceland's topography in this area is so subtle that the position of the eruption would really dictate where the lava goes because there's one scenario where uh, the lava if it's if it's erupting a little further south it's going to head towards the coast um, and very likely inundate portions if not all of Grindavik which would be uh, quite tragic um, that would people would lose their homes uh, if it inundates the harbor I mean that's worst case scenario but but still something that's on the table um, if it erupts a little bit further north that's bad for the Blue Lagoon and the power plant they'd have to shut down the power plant uh, the number one tourist attraction in Iceland would be gone uh, there is a little bit of a pass here uh, along the road and so it would take a lot of magma to get the the lava excuse me up and over this divide um, and I'm not sure what the elevations are here we're about 131 feet here and then gets up to about 190 feet or so yeah so you'd have to you'd have to climb up about 60 or so feet uh, 20 meters or so in order to spill down this valley right along uh, highway 30 or road thir four, or 43 excuse me there um, another scenario is if it erupts maybe further 
out in this area kind of northwest or so of or north of the Blue Lagoon uh, there's a chance that some of it starts heading down this way to the northwest um, there's a couple topographic obstacles hill here but there's still uh, a downward slope that could take it um, for the most part down this way and headed towards the airport again I don't this is actually probably I think it would turn and head off this way before it got that way we'd have to look at some models the topographic models but um, you know possibly right I think that's even a less likely scenario than um, going into the the fishing village down here so uh, we'll wait and see it's an interesting um, situation that's developing so uh, maybe pay attention to the news if, if anything happens I'll I'll try to get back on here and uh, break some of it down for you as best I can um, but really it, it really would depend on exactly where this eruption takes place I put the little volcano symbol there just kind of in the middle of the zone that's not meant to indicate that that's where the vent is going to be um, and like a lot of these last eruptions the way it would probably start out initially is it's going to start out as a series of um, a, a fissure eruption so it's going to be a crack in the ground lava pouring out of the crack gas coming out with it clots of lava being thrown uh, into the air locally and then over time it will consolidate that lava supply into discrete locations along the fissure it's kind of like we can see here in the past you can see a cone there a cone there some of these nested cones um, and so that's probably what we would see with this eruption just like we've seen in the last three eruptions over the last three years so uh, so stay tuned hopefully this was helpful um, let me know what you think and um, in the comments and if there's anything I can answer I'll, I'll try my best to answer that but let's uh, uh, hope and pray for the good folks in Iceland that uh, if we do get an eruption that it's just a nice tourist attraction and that it doesn't threaten uh, people's lives or uh, their livelihoods or some of the infrastructure that's in place here so but we'll just have to wait and see so thanks again for joining me geologist Sean Wilsey just sharing a little bit of the recent developments in Iceland have a good day